Just the bar? Well, well. Couldn't hear you. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. And also, His Excellency, Archbishop yes. Pio Lavi. It's a great pleasure. Well, good to see you. Thank you for receiving us. Well, I have noticed that you have been with us two days ago in Philadelphia, and yes. yesterday, yesterday <laughs> it was beautiful. Yes, well, thank you. Maybe we should get a picture of all three of us. Yes. Oh, we, I, no, think I think you yes. should be and then, in the middle. And then, yes. What? No, no. You should be in the middle. I want you to be in the middle. Yes. Oh, this is... Well, thanks. That's very good. Well, okay. the attitude I know that it's very difficult, the situation in the Middle East, and what you're faced with there, but I want you to know that we still have as a major call a eventual peace in the Middle East one that would recognize the legitimate political rights of the Palestinian people. And while I only have a few more months to continue attempting that, if the election turns out the way I think it will, <laughs> should, I think that will still continue to be our cause. Oh, that's not... Well, I want to tell you, Mr. President, about the situation now. Well, the actual situation now is very hard for us. But that's something not know what can be done for even these actual days. But the problem also for us is a problem of uh, Christian uh, presence in the Holy Land also. While I am Palestinian, I am the patriarch of Jerusalem also, and therefore I, am, I care for everybody in the Holy Land, for the Jew, the Muslim, and the Christian. Sure. But also, I represent the Christian presence, and we are worried for the Christian survival in the Holy Land. And that means that our Christians, being 98% Palestinians, their survival is tied with the survival of the Palestinian people, and with their legitimate rights, as you said. Could I ask a, a question? Because this is, I'm, I've always been conscious of the division between yeah. the Israelis and the, yeah. and the, uh, the Palestinians, but uh, it comes as a surprise here. What actually is the attitude between the Palestinians who are Muslim and, yeah. and with the Christians? It is the same, and they both are in the same situation. They are facing the same problem and having the same sufferings. They are the same in the same uprising, and therefore the same they are. They are supporting the same uh, reprisals from the part of the Israel. Therefore, Christians and Muslims, Arabs, Palestinians, are well together. Now, sufferings have more united them also. And as for the future of the Christian community, Arab community, it cannot be dissociated from the Muslim community. Yes, yes. That's the point. Mm -hmm. You could say that there are three million Jews from one yeah, side. Yeah, about, yeah, so. Two million, more or less, Muslim from the other side, and 100,000, more or less, 150,000 Christians. Of course, I always yeah. assume that the Muslims normally thought of as Christians as unbelievers. Yes, yeah, but this, well, but indeed on the, the daily life we are living together. Yes. Sometimes we have hard times, but it is like hard times between brothers. Mm -hmm. So yes. we are brothers, <laughs> useless, <laughs> and we cannot, we cannot dissociate ourselves from the Muslim world. It is our culture, our people, Cannot. We could say so, this, uh, Mr. President, that between Christian and Muslim is the relationship between cousins. Between the Christian and the Jews is the relationship with us in the law, in law, mother-in-law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the relationship with mother-in-law <laughs> is more difficult than the cousins. <laughs> well, so. well, we're very honored to have you here. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And we hope you will do something yes. for we'll the Holy Land as a whole, for the Palestinian people, 
That's what the Jewish people will say. Because both are human beings, both yes. are, have the same rights, and both can have one land and one land. <laughs> See? We had a very nice conversation with uh, Secretary Schulz. Very well, nice. that's fine. So, thank you. 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 Thank
pleased and proud to have him with us. Mr. President, the marvelous letter does not come to your desk. Will it be because it doesn't concern anything that happened before he came to this country? I would think that it would have to be a matter involving foreign policy to bring it to my desk, not just some legal uh, technicality. So if it's for, for acts that were committed after he came to this country, it wouldn't necessarily have to come to you, is that it? Now that I don't know. Again, as I say, things come to me when it involves foreign policy. Is it time for you to make overtures for the United States to make overtures to North Korea? Yes, we have this under discussion, and this has been uh, something we're dealing with uh, right now. What did you say with Mr. Proxy, Mr. President? What was the tone of the discussion with Mr. Proxy? What was the tone of the discussion with Mr. Proxy? We talked a little about uh, our NATO alliance and uh, the problems that we have with regard to security on that front and so forth. And it was basically that kind of talk. Mr. President, do you have any comment on the way that market responded yesterday on the first anniversary of Black Monday, apparently in, the, in response to rumors about Vice President Bush? Well, that long ago, Faith decided that there isn't very much of a way to uh, predict things on the market could make it go up and make it go down, and uh, so much of it can be done just on rumors. But uh, we saw the big fall of a year ago, and a year later, uh, there's been no disaster, and everything is proceeding at normal, so I'm not going to get upset by the ups and downs of the market. Uh, Mr. President, what is the main subject you are going to tell uh, Re President Doe of South Korea? Uh, we have so much in common, and we've been allied for so long that uh, I think there are a number of things for us to, to talk about and discuss, including relations with North Korea. Mr. President, all South Korea's overtures to North Korea. Could you give us a sense of the United States' opinion of North Korea? Uh, we will be discussing that whole issue, that entire issue. Can you envision a time in the near future when the U.S. would be reducing its military presence in South Korea? That is a possibility, but if not one of drawing, it would be a case of no longer That would be the only way it would be. Do you see signs that they may not be needed that much longer? Do you see some signs from the North they may not be needed that much longer? I couldn't put my finger on some definite signs, but I can just say, seeing how other areas of the world have, uh, it, uh, tensions have been lessened, that uh, if there's a possibility of that, why then, yes, that should happen. Is it more probable now, Mr. Reagan, than... Do you see a role for the U.S. in any possible reconciliation between... Do you see a role for the U.S. in any possible reconciliation between North and South Korea? Well, the role of President is to be of any help we can. Do you see a greater likelihood now, Mr. President, than at the first of your administration, that those U.S. troops could be pulled out of South Korea? Well, there have been a great many changes over these eight years, and uh, I think it's possible to see some things that we couldn't foresee then. But listen, I've got to, I've got to, we have, have a meeting to get to here. President, you know, you seem, you seem reluctant to give any hint that you might be softening the U.S. position toward North Korea. Is that the impression you want us to have? That you're reluctant? It means, I think, if you're going to be talking about negotiations of any kind, you don't give anything away in advance. Well, hello there. How do you do? Good, Good to, to meet you. Good to see you. Well, thank you. 
Forbes over. Mr. President. Hello. Jerry Milbank, right, Mr. Well, President. Jerry, hi, nice how are you? Oops. Thank you. And Jack Bronta. All right. See you again, Mr. President. Hello. See you. See you. Thank you. Well, Mr. President, would you like to have a group picture? All right. I'd love to. All right. All right. Thank you. I should like Should I be the little nose between all these? Why don't we get three of you on the other side? Sure. Okay. Three on the other side. Okay, that's great. Raise it from here. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. We, uh, George Mash has authored a book on my grandmother, father. The second volume of what will be a five or six volume series. And George would like to present a copy of the book to you and has a few things he'd like to say. Well, Mr. President, uh, 24 years ago today, Herbert Hoover passed away at the age of 90. And during his life, he spent 50 years in public service. And what I'm attempting to do is to do a multi-volume biography of him, documenting his many contributions to the United States. And in this second volume, I begin to consider his career, great career as a humanitarian in World War I in helping the people of Belgium. And it has been said that he saved more lives than any other person in history. And I begin to document that in this volume. It's a great privilege and honor to be able to present it to you. Well, I am very honored to accept it, and I thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Having lived long enough to be aware of that period back there, I very much know about his, uh, his great work in Europe there. There's never been anything like that, I don't think, for, for a single individual to be in charge of, as he was of that, single-handedly almost. Yes, it's a remarkable story. I'm telling you the story. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. Olberg would like to say just a few brief things about an invitation that he'll leave with the office here. Yes, uh, Mr. President, uh, next October, the uh, Hoover Library, in conjunction with the Ford and Carter Libraries, will be undertaking a study of the ex-presidency. And as uh, President Hoover said, this is my exclusive trade union. We know that you'll only be nine months into that uh, position <laughs> and undoubtedly are not making any commitments at this time. However, we would like to leave this letter uh, with your uh, staff and, and hope that perhaps next fall you would consider taking part in that. Well, thank you very much. You were absolutely right about not being able to make any commitments at this time. <laughs> but I, well, I appreciate that very much. And, might as well be a member of that union as all the other members. It's a fine one. <laughs> yes. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. The Hoover Institution out at Stanford University is uh, the possessor of all of my governmental papers as governor of California. As a matter of fact, it was an astonishing thing when I went over there for the reception of them. I don't know how many tons there were, but I think it was 27 tons, and there were a great big stack of these cardboard cartons that you get and put together for things of that kind. And right in the middle of the stack, with all the cameras cranking, apparently we had fallen one box short. And the box in the middle was a Daniel's whiskey. <laughs> but the word's very visible and sizable. <laughs> well, well, I shall look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're have those papers in Stanford. What? We're sure looking forward to the years that, that are coming. Oh, no, you mean my presidential papers? Oh, sure. No, we're honored to have the governor's papers. Oh, the yeah. Governor's, and, yeah, they're at the, at the Hoover yeah, Institute. I'm sure looking forward to it. But uh, no, the others, we'll have a library of our own. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And actually see the ocean from where it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> they're breaking ground on November 21st, I understand. They, they are hoping to do that. And I've got my fingers crossed that they will. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you again. Well, thank you all very much.